Europe's biggest nightmare, fueled by greed, power, and an insatiable thirst for control, planning the distribution of tens of thousands of kilos of narcotics across the continent. Yet, these masterminds remain untouched by the law. This is the chilling reality of Europe's underworld, dominated by a ruthless cartel, the Kinahan Cartel. The two previously aligned factions went to war, sparking the deadliest gang feud in Ireland's history. To prevent more killings in an ongoing feud between the Hutch and Kinahan crime groups. In the gritty alleys and dimly lit corners of Dublin during the 1990s, Christopher Kinahan was making a name for himself, not in the respectable circles of society, but in the shadowy underworld of crime. He wasn't just dabbling in petty theft or small-time hustles. Christopher was knee-deep in the illicit trade of drugs and the machinations of organized crime. Think of it like this, a young man with a cunning mind and a knack for staying under the radar. Christopher wasn't content with just scraping by, he had bigger ambitions and bigger dreams, but a dangerous way to make them come true. He knew that drugs held the key to his ascent in the criminal hierarchy, so he dove headfirst into the drug trade, peddling narcotics to the eager youth of Dublin, establishing himself as a formidable force in the city's criminal landscape. But as Christopher's empire began to flourish, cracks started to form within his inner circle. In the early 2000s, tensions boiled over, leading to a split within the gang. It wasn't just a mere difference of opinion or a clash of egos, it was a full-blown power struggle, with lives hanging in the balance. The fallout from this split was brutal, a string of fatalities that rocked the criminal underworld and sent shockwaves through the streets of Dublin. Through all this insanity and bloodshed, Christopher saw an opportunity, a chance to expand his operations beyond the confines of Dublin, beyond the reach of his enemies. And so, he made a strategic decision that would change the course of his criminal empire forever. He relocated to Spain. But this wasn't just any move. It was a calculated maneuver to tap into the lucrative European cocaine market and solidify the Kinahan cartel's foothold on the continent. They were moving insane amounts of cocaine. We're talking a crazy 23 billion euros worth into Europe. With Spain as his base of operations, Christopher wasted no time in spreading his influence far and wide. From the bustling streets of Madrid to the tranquil shores of Marbella, the Kinahan cartel's presence was felt, its tendrils reaching into every corner of the European underworld. But this was only the start. Christopher wasn't content with just conquering Europe. He had his sights set on global domination from the very start. And so, the Kinahan cartel set its sights on new territories, establishing a presence in the UK and Dubai. With each new outpost, their power and influence grew cementing their status as one of the most formidable criminal organizations in the world. From drug trafficking to money laundering, the Kinahan cartel had its hand in every lucrative venture imaginable, its reach extending far beyond the borders of Ireland. But as the cartel's empire expanded, so too did the ire of law enforcement agencies around the world. With each passing day, the net tightened around Christopher and his associates, threatening to unravel the carefully constructed web of lies and deceit that had kept them in power for so long. Which brings us to the escalation of violence for this cartel in Europe. While Christopher had his eyes set on conquering the world, things became ugly back at home in the underworld of Dublin. The feud between the Kinahan and Hutch clans erupted into a violent clash that sent shockwaves through the city's streets. What began as a dispute over territory and power quickly escalated into a full-blown war, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. Picture this. The streets of Dublin transformed into a battleground, with rival factions locked in a deadly struggle for supremacy. The Kinahan Cartel, led by Christopher's son Daniel Kinahan and the Hutch clan, led by Gary the Monk Hutch, were at each other's throats, their feud fueled by decades of simmering animosity. The violence was ruthless, with each side resorting to increasingly brutal tactics to gain the upper hand. Assassinations became commonplace, with members of both clans targeted and gunned down in cold blood. Ambushes were staged, with gunmen lying in wait to strike at their enemies when they least expected it, and public shootouts erupted on the streets of Dublin, sending panicked civilians fleeing for cover. The casualties mounted, with innocent bystanders caught in the crossfire. Families were torn apart, lives shattered by the senseless violence that gripped the city. The fear was palpable, with residents living in constant terror of becoming collateral damage in the feud between two of Dublin's most notorious crime families. But the impact of the feud extended far beyond the streets of Dublin, 
its impact was felt throughout the entire country, prompting widespread condemnation and calls for action. Law enforcement agencies scrambled to contain the violence, but their efforts were often thwarted by the cartel's ruthless tactics and vast resources. And that's not all. Their tentacles spread into unexpected territories, including the world of professional boxing. It all started with Daniel Kinahan, a man with a knack for spotting opportunities where others saw none. In 2012, he co-founded MTK Global, a boxing management company based in Marbella. On the surface, it seemed like a legitimate venture, a way for Daniel to reinvent himself and distance himself from his criminal past. But beneath the veneer of respectability lurked allegations of money laundering and criminal ties. You see, the boxing industry was the perfect cover for the cartel's illicit activities. With big-name fighters under their management, they had access to vast sums of money, much of which flowed through offshore accounts and shell companies. But at the center of it all was Daniel Kinahan, pulling the strings behind the scenes. But their influence didn't stop there. In the UK, the cartel had a network of key operatives, including Thomas Kavanagh and James Mulvey. These were the foot soldiers, the ones responsible for ensuring that the cartel's operations ran smoothly on the ground. From drug trafficking to money laundering, they were involved in every aspect of the cartel's criminal empire. Estimates suggest that their wealth surpassed the 1 billion euro mark, although this figure may only scratch the surface of their true financial power. But their reign of terror didn't go unnoticed. International law enforcement agencies were hot on their trail, determined to bring them to justice. Assets were seized, financial sanctions were imposed, and extraditions requests filled. The net was closing in on the Kinahan cartel, and they knew it. However, as you might have already suspected, they were a resilient bunch, unwilling to go down without a fight. For every setback, they found a way to adapt and evolve, staying one step ahead of the authorities. It was a game of cat and mouse, with the fate of the cartel hanging in the balance. Despite law enforcement efforts to curb their activities, the Kinahan cartel continued to rake in billions of euros, largely fueled by the lucrative drug trade. The Irish drug market alone is estimated to be worth 800 million euros, with the cartel playing a significant role in its expansion. Their ability to evade capture and adapt to changing circumstances underscores their resilience in the face of international pressure. In the end, the international efforts against the cartel would prove to be their undoing. With their assets frozen and their operatives under constant surveillance, they found themselves backed into a corner, with nowhere left to run. But as the saying goes, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And for the Kinahan cartel, the fall from grace would be swift and merciless. As the walls closed in on the Kinahan cartel, law enforcement agencies on both sides of the Atlantic launched a coordinated crackdown that would shake the foundations of organized crime. In a move reminiscent of a Hollywood blockbuster, European law enforcement agencies teamed up with the US Department of Justice to take down the Kinahan cartel once and for all during the summer of 2022, April to be exact. It was a joint effort of unprecedented scale, with agencies sharing intelligence and resources to bring the full force of the law to bear on the cartel's operations. Garda Commissioner Drew Harris stated, the focus of the international crackdown on the organized crime group is on gathering evidence and Ireland will support efforts to prosecute its leaders in another jurisdiction if that is where a trial ends up taking place. But it wasn't just brute force that brought the cartel to its knees. Legal strategies played a crucial role in dismantling the cartel's financial empire. Asset freezes and financial sanctions were used to choke off its sources of funding, leaving the Kenhans scrambling to find ways to keep their operations afloat. Not only that, but Rewards of $5 million, 4.7 million euros, have been offered by US authorities to anyone who can supply information leading to the arrests and convictions of Christy Kinahan Sr. and his sons, Daniel and Christopher Jr. The impact of these law enforcement actions was felt across the cartel's organizational structure. Recruitment efforts faltered as potential recruits saw the writing on the wall and distanced themselves from the sinking ship. Operational capabilities were severely hampered, with key operatives under constant surveillance and assets frozen. But perhaps the most devastating blow was the damage done to the cartel's reputation. Once feared and respected, they were now viewed as little more than common criminals, their once untouchable status reduced to rubble. Yet despite the relentless pressure from law enforcement, the cartel refused to go down without a fight. They dug in their heels, clinging desperately to the last shreds of their power and influence. However, the combined might of European and American law enforcement proved too much for the Kinahan cartel to withstand. As their grip on power slipped away, they found themselves facing an uncertain future. 
their once mighty empire reduced to ashes. As the dust settled on the battlefield of organized crime, the Kenahan Cartel found itself facing a myriad of challenges and uncertain prospects. Within the dark corners of the Kinahan Cartel, whispers of suspicion echoed like a chilling breeze. Christopher Kinahan, the patriarch of the clan, conducted an internal investigation, fearing the presence of informants within their ranks. Paranoia ran rampant, with each member eyeing their comrades with a mixture of distrust and fear. The cartel's once unbreakable unity was crumbling, and nobody wanted to trust others threatened by the spectre of betrayal from within. But even as the cartel grappled with internal strife, the streets of Dublin remained on edge, haunted by the spectre of violence. With the Kinahan cartel's dominance threatened by law enforcement crackdowns, there were whispers of a resurgence, a return to the bloody days of the past. The scars of old conflicts were still fresh, and many feared that history would repeat itself in a never-ending cycle of bloodshed and revenge. In the middle of the chaos, new contenders emerged from the shadows, eager to fill the power vacuum left by the Kinahan Cartel's downfall. Chief among them were the Grindon Brothers, a criminal organization on the rise. With law enforcement focused on dismantling the Kinahan Empire, the Grindons seized the opportunity to expand their influence, their ambitions fueled by the promise of untold riches and power. But despite the challenges they faced, the Kinahan Cartel refused to go quietly into the night. They clung to their dwindling power with tenacity, unwilling to relinquish their grip on the criminal underworld. Yet, their eventual downfall seemed inevitable and foregone conclusion in the ever-shifting landscape of organized crime. And as the curtain falls on the reign of the Kinahan Cartel, the implications apply far beyond the streets of Dublin. Their demise signaled a seismic shift in the European underworld, a changing of the guard as new players vied for dominance in the shadows. From its humble origins in the streets of Dublin to its meteoric rise to power, the Kinahan Cartel's reign of terror has left an indelible mark on Europe. With a sprawling network of operatives and a ruthless determination to expand its influence, the cartel orchestrated a wide array of criminal activities, from drug trafficking to money laundering, leaving no stone unturned in its quest for dominance. Despite concerted efforts by law enforcement agencies to dismantle the cartel's operations, the Kinahan Cartel has proven to be a formidable adversary, displaying remarkable resilience in the face of international pressure. Through strategic maneuvers and a willingness to adapt to changing circumstances, the cartel has managed to evade capture and continue its illicit activities, albeit under increasing scrutiny. As we look to the future, the trajectory of the Kinahan Cartel remains uncertain. While law enforcement efforts have dealt significant blows to the organization, its deep-rooted connections and vast resources suggest that it may yet endure. The potential resurgence of violence in Dublin and the emergence of new competitors only add to the complexity of the situation, leaving us to ponder the implications for the future of European organized crime. And if you want to stay updated about the latest developments, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We've got more crimes to share with you. See you in the next one.